I just don't buy Kindle books. I like used books, going to used bookstores, or shopping at thrift books. And today, I want to show you a little bit of my paperback purchases. <music> Hello, welcome to my channel, another bibliophile reads. My name is Greg, and today I want to show you my purchases from used bookstores and thrift books, because I like to shop for used books. The first couple come from Second and Charles in Richmond, Virginia. This is Elmore Leonard, The Bounty Hunters, a Western. It says, the first Elmore Leonard novel. He is a little more famous for his crime and mystery novels, and I've read some of his Western short stories, and his short stories are really rather good. I have not read one of his Western novels yet, but um, maybe I'll pick this up later in the year, or wait for next June and pick it up for June on the Range. But this is about a a bounty hunter going after an old Apache renegade, Salado Viejo. And um, they're out to get him. That's all that I really know. Another Western I picked up, mostly for this old, tiny cover, is Comanche Vengeance by this is Richard Jessup. And it's got that lovely lady in a dress and the man shooting his gun on the ground. But let me read you the back cover. It does not promise to be the best Western I've ever read. Let us, let's put it this way, ma'am, Duke said. Softly, gently, the Comanches left a trail, all right. A trail of broken bodies and slow death. You can't follow them into their camp. They'd kill you. Not before I got off a few shots myself. Sarah snapped. Now, ma'am, Duke spoke sternly. I don't like to hear that kind of talk from a lady. I'm going to help you whether you like it or not. He followed her on the trail for vengeance, a guardian angel with a fast gun. Now this is a find for me. It's a little hard to buy new online, and it is um, from one of my favorite historical novelists, and that is George MacDonald Fraser, Black Ajax. This is not technically part of his fabulous Flashman series, but if I read the back, when Captain Buck Flashman sees a black boxer catch a fly in mid-flight, he realizes that he is in the presence of speed such as the prize ring has never seen. That's Flashman's daddy. So, gotta be a lot of fun. It's about a boxer. So if I read it this summer, I can also squeeze it in for the summer of sport. The only problem is I don't have all that much time left in July. My schedule is kind of crowded. And then, you know, August is garb August, but maybe I can squeeze this in. Should be great. And at my local used bookstore down in Fredericksburg, Virginia, I kind of got a couple of these. They're, they're sort of magazines, sort of books. It is a um, High Adventure, number 70. And these are all pulp short stories or novellas. Exclusive. I mean, you can't really see that there. Exclusive. The Green Llama, The Amazing, Thrilling Adventures of a crime fighter extraordinaire as compiled from his personal case books by Richard Foster. I have never heard of the Green Llama. 
before. But reading from the back. Only the green llama stood between this mysterious, sinister, master criminal and the domination of the world. Only the green llama had the knowledge out of the ages, the fortitude, out of a life of strict adherence to truth and belief in justice to combat this menace, which threatened the very life of the nation. So this looks absolutely wonderful for Garbagist. If you look in the, the, the table of contents, they are mostly short stories and novellas. So I can almost certainly find one of these to read. But wait, I couldn't buy just one. There we go. The Green Llama, Crocius of Murder. Now, if you look over here, you have a, a tender young lady strapped to a piece of wood, and she is being whipped. You're not going to get covers like that anymore. The Green Llama battled a new criminal menace, a Führer who seeks to dominate the gold markets of the world. Armed with the secret weapon of the world's most hated dictator, this mysterious masked Führer sought to subjugate the free people of the world. But one man, the Green Llama, stood in his merciless path. Okay, that is um, issue number 75. I bought three of them. This is a high adventure, The Sign of the Scar. The Phantom makes a frontal attack on the forces of crime when an archfiend dedicated to blackmail, loot, and murder reaches out avidly to wrest lawlessness, to wrest lawless tribute from a great city. And that is the Phantom Detective. I am well set for Garbagist. And lastly, I want to show you four books that I purchased from Thrift Books. These are rereads for me. I originally read them when I was in high school. This would have been 81 or 82. You know, a raw youth, just um, trying to scrape by in existence. But by one of my favorite authors of the time, and that is Michael Moorcock. And this is his Hawk Moon series. Michael Moorcock is better known for his Elric saga, but um, I had a lot of fun with these books when I read them in high school. And they're kind of hard to find nowadays. Usually when I look them up online, this first one, The Jewel in the Skull, is usually selling between $20 and $30. And I don't want to pay that much for it. About a week or two ago, I saw one on Thrift Books, and it was selling for seven bucks. And I told myself, for seven bucks, I can definitely pick up Michael Moorcock's The Jewel in the Skull. And this is the story of Dorian Hawkmoon. He is one of the internal champions. And in this story, if I remember correctly, he is a duke of some country. The, the setting in this fantasy land is more or less our world around England, but it's not quite the same. It may even be post-apocalyptic. I'm not quite positive about that. But anyway, Hawkmoon is captured by some enemies, and they insert this jewel in his skull. And this jewel is sort of like a, a, a magic scarab that the enemies can view the world around him. And this, this jewel can also come alive and bury itself into Hawk Moon's brain if he disobeys. And the first book um, is um, How Does Hawk Moon Overcome the Jewel in His Skull? 
Second in the series is the Mad God's Amulet. I honestly don't remember a lot of this story at all. But these covers are great. And this was, again, it was like six or seven bucks. So that's worth it. Now, the only problem is the, this particular edition is um, looked like it's been dropped pretty heavy, sort of creased there. But otherwise, it's a fine reading copy. And look at that, that, that great cover art. Really fun. Now this, the, the Sword of Dawn, is the third book in the series. As I, if I remember, it's actually set in America. Uh, Hawk Moon goes on his travels. But look what people did with covers back then. Old Hawk Moon is buck naked with a sword. And there is this lizard with octopus arms covering up his nakedness to make it a decent cover. Mm. I wish I remembered more about this book other than it was set in the United States. The last book in the Hawkman series is The Rune Staff, another fabulous cover. Um, I remember one of the last scenes in this book, and it really rather made my teenage self rather sad. Let's just say um, not all characters survive this series, which if you are familiar with um, Morcock, you're not too surprised about that. So there is my books purchased from Thrift Books. I do want to try to um, make a go at uh, reading those Hawkmoon books this year or maybe later last year and just read them all in a row, just devour that series. As I said, this whole series is shorter than most modern fantasy books. And um, I kind of like my fantasy at this length. I, that's what I grew up with, and that's what I really like. So I'm eager to revisit those books. Thank you for watching, and keep on reading.